Hello and welcome to the session. This is Professor Farhad in which we would look at the allowance for doubtful accounts as well as bad debt expense. These topics are covered on the CPA exam for section as well as intermediate accounting course. What I offer you, what the difference between what I offer you and a CPA prep course is I explain the material from scratch. I don't assume any base level of knowledge. So that's why if you want to learn more about this topic, sign up for my website farhadlectures.com where you would learn more about both allowance as well as bad debt expense, especially in my intermediate accounting course. As always, I'm going to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn. If you haven't done so, YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,700 plus accounting, auditing, tax, finance, as well as Excel tutorial. If you like my lectures, please like them, share them. If they benefit you, it means they might benefit other people. Connect with me on Instagram. As I just stated on my website, farhatlectures.com, you will have detailed explanation about topics such as allowance, bad debt expense, as well as any and every accounting topic that you can think of. One subscription gives you access to all the material. So the best way to illustrate the concept of allowance and bad debt expense is to actually work examples to show you how this all fits together. Because if you don't, what you need to know is you need to understand what you don't know. Because before you go before you take the CPA exam, it's important to know what you don't know. And how do you know you don't know something is when you cannot answer the questions properly. So let's see how much you know from answering these questions. On December 1st, year five, the Thomas Corp has a credit balance of 700 in the allowance for doubtful account. Now, if they don't say credit balance, if they only say they had a balance of 700 in the allowance for doubtful account, you can assume it's a credit balance. Why? Here we go. Allowance for doubtful account, I call it ADA, allowance for doubtful account is a contra asset, is a contra asset, specifically contra receivable. To be more specific, the asset is receivable. If it's a contra asset, it will have a normal balance of a credit. So it's very important to know this because sometimes they don't tell you it's a credit balance they tell you just the balance is 700 okay so they already have they're already telling us we have an existing credit balance of 700 um prior to the consideration of the following aging schedule that was prepared at year end so that's all what we have we have a balance of 700 dollar credit balance and they're giving us an aging schedule of the receivable what amount should Thomas report as an ending in the allowance account? So what they're asking is for this number. They're asking for what should be the ending balance? What should be the ending balance? Well, can we find out what the ending balance is? Well, before we find the ending balance, do you understand what does it mean? What does it mean? to have a credit balance, because that's important. You wanna understand what does it mean to have a credit balance? What does it mean? It means in the prior period, prior period, you overestimated your allowance. That's what it means. So the first thing you want to know is the credit balance means it's coming from the prior period. You overestimated. Now, what does it mean overestimated? Well, I'll explain this in a moment once we have the numbers in, but this is what it means. So let's find out what should be the balance. Well, so what's that number here? So that's what we're looking for. What's that number? Well, what we do is this. Since we are giving a schedule of aging receivable, we're going to take each group 50,000 times 3%. We're going to take 10,000 times 6%. So, and we're going to take, and for the amount over 5,000, they already give us the number is 2,500. So what is 50,000 times 3%? That's equal to 1,500. What is 10,000 times uh, 6%? That's equal to 600. And 2,500 is giving. We add them up. 2,500 plus 1,500, that's 4,000 plus 600, that's 4,600. Voila! This is the target balance. This is what they're asking about. This is the allowance for the ending allowance. So the question is, what is the ending balance in the allowance? The ending balance is 
4,600. That's the question. That's the question. So the answer is B. I'm sorry. The answer is very important. A. Sorry. Okay. I told you uh, I made a mistake when I said B because it has to be a credit balance. The allowance has a credit balance of 4,600. How much should Thomas Corp record as bad debt expense? So the question is, what should be bad debt expense? Well, let's see. I just told you that we already have, or what's giving to us is, we have a credit balance of 700. And I just told you this 700 means from the prior year you overestimated. You overestimated your balance by 700. That's why you still have a credit balance. It means you booked bad debt expense and allowance more than what happened, which is not bad, not bad. But now the question is how much do we report for this year? Well, if my target is 4,600, is I need to have 4,600 and I already have 700, all what I need to do is book the difference. And the difference between those is 3,900. Therefore, the entry is bad debt expense, 3,900 allowance for doubtful account credit 3900 and by having here 3900 700 plus 3900 is a credit balance of 4600 and this should be my credit balance so hopefully you were able to follow this otherwise if you're not sure how i did this because um i try to explain as much as possible but if you go to my farhatlectures.com you will find you know detailed explanation about this receivable allowance and bad debt expense. Let's change the scenario here. Assume the allowance has a previous balance prior to the adjustment of 500 debits. So it's very important that you read those very carefully. It's a debit balance rather than 700 credit. So on the prior example, this is what we said. In the prior example, we said we have a 700 credit. Now they're saying, let's assume rather than a credit, you have a debit of 500 from the prior period. What would happen if you have a debit of 500? First of all, what does a debit mean? Debit means from the prior year, you underestimated. And when you underestimate, you're allowance for doubtful account you'll end up with a debit balance so maybe you estimated ten thousand you end up losing ten thousand five hundred losing means you had bad debt expense of ten thousand five hundred but you estimated ten thousand therefore you end up with a debit balance now if you end up with a debit balance the first question is this how much should thomas record in the allowance for doubtful account at year end well the target would still be 4,600. So the target should be in the allowance based on the information giving 4,600. This should be the allowance balance. The second question reads, how much should Thomas record for bad debt expense? Basically the same question as in the prior session, except here we are starting with a debit balance. We underestimate. So since we underestimated the prior year, here's what's going to happen. We need to book enough we need to book enough credit to eliminate the debit and keep 4,600. Well, how much do we need? Well, I need to have 4,600 plus 500. So I need to book 5,100. Therefore, I will debit bad debt expense. That's my debit and it's going to have to be 5,100. And I credit my allowance for doubtful account 5,100. When I credit my allowance for doubtful account, 5,100, it's going to eliminate my debit and it's going to give me a balance of 4,600 and that's exactly what I'm looking for, having a balance of 4,600 ending allowance balance. Now, here's a trick that you need to remember. After you compute your balance, your target balance, here's what you do. If you have a credit balance if you have a credit balance, a prior credit balance like this one, you will take the target balance, the ending balance. I call the ending balance the target. You take the target minus the credit. So the target is 4,600 minus the credit of 700 will give you your entry of 3,900. Now, in this example, you had a debit balance. What you do if you have a debit balance, you take your target plus your debit balance to find your entry. Your target here is 4,600. Your debit balance is 
500 all all in all 5100 and that's your entry that's your entry again if you need more explanation please go to my intermediate accounting for lectures.com let's take a look at this question when a company uses the allowance method to account for bad debt what effect does a collection of a previously written off account has on bad debt expense and allowance for doubtful account this question is loaded loaded in other words if you can answer this question in order to answer this question you have a, you have to have a good understanding of how allowance work let me walk you through an allowance complete example to answer this question so it's it's better to understand it i can give you the answer but i should explain to you how we get to the answer so here's what happened at the end of every accounting period so let's assume it's december 31st year one what we do is we estimate bad debt so what we do is we debit bad debt expense and i'm going to be using some numbers ten thousand and i'm going to credit allowance for doubtful account ten thousand so for this particular company at the end of the year i estimated i think we're going to lose ten thousand worth of uh, uh we're going to experience ten thousand of bad debt expense in the coming period that's fine this is what i booked i estimated this at year end then what's going to happen we're going to move on and you know life will go on and we're going to find out which account which customers or which account specifically are not paying and as a result we might remove them so let's assume i find out that farhat accounting lectures is not paying their bill and they owe us two thousand dollar and you know we we contacted farhat accounting lectures we send them emails we send them letters our lawyer called them they're not paying they're simply you know they're going bankrupt so what we do once we give up on a client and let's assume on april 1st kind of we made a decision farhat accounting lectures is a deadbeat customer let's write off their account so what we do when we write off an account under the allowance method we debit allowance for doubtful account 2000 so simply put what i'm going to do i'm going to keep allowance for doubtful account balance here remember we had ten thousand now we debited 2000 we still have 8000 so we debit allowance for doubtful account 2000 and we're going to write off the deadbeat farhat accounting lecture account account receivable 2000 at this point we wrote, we wrote off the account receivable for farhat accounting lectures guess what a month later may 1st farhat accounting lectures the owner won the lottery and this guy which is me decided to pay back my 2000 so i decided to go back and pay the 2000 because i really owe this company two thousand dollar so what would the company do what would the company do here's what would the company would do first the company would reverse what they did so they will debit my account receivable two thousand and they will credit ada two thousand then they will debit cash two thousand then they will credit account receivable fal 2000 so the question here is the question let's go back to the question when the company uses the allowance what effect does a collection of a previously written off account so the previously written off account is this account here this is where we wrote off the account so what effect does a previously written off account has on bad debt expense and the answer is nada there is no effect on bad debt expense notice we did not use we did not use bad debt expense we did not use bad debt expense uh, in this example in any way shape or form so notice bad debt expense was not mentioned here therefore the answer is uh, bad debt expense increase that's out bad debt expense decrease that's out no effect no effect so we have a and d what about the allowance well guess what after they paid us the money we put back the money in the allowance. We increase the allowance by 2,000. Now we're back to 10,000. So the allowance will increase. The allowance for doubtful account will increase. So the allowance is notice the allowance went up. No effect on bad debt expense. The allowance went up. Okay? The allowance went up. So I'm just going to take this example a step further. I want to explain to you what I meant by um, uh, underestimate and overestimate. Here's what, I mean. Here's what I'm going to show you. Let's assume, let's rewind and go back and assume farhat never paid the 2000 they never won the lottery let's assume this is what end up happening the whole year 
the whole year is Farhad bailed out on us and we still have 8,000 credit balance. If that if that's what happened, we have a credit balance. It means we overestimated the balance. It means we over we overreported the balance. We overestimated the balance. That's what it means. But let's assume another client, another client, they owe us fifteen thousand dollar, and it's ABC client. So on May fifteenth, we figured out that ABC client is really you know is not going to pay us. So we debit allowance for doubtful account, fifteen thousand. It's a big it's a big account, and we credit account receivable, ABC company. 15,000. Now what we do is we debit allowance 15,000. Notice now, now we have a balance. Let me write it here. Now we have a balance of 7,000 debit. If we end up with a debit balance, it means we underestimated. And this is why I was saying it's very important to know what does that mean if you end up with a debit balance in the allowance or a credit balance. Because in the following year, you will make up the difference. You will make up the difference. Um, as always, if you like this recording, please like it. But if you want to learn more about this topic that I don't believe your CPA prep course does a good job explaining. It's not they don't do. It's they assume you know the basics. I don't assume anything. If you go to my intermediate accounting or to my supplemental CPA material, you will have a detailed explanation about what I just did. Check out forhatlectures.com if you're interested in improving your grade and adding 10 to 15 points to your CPA exam. Good luck. Study hard and stay safe.